Hello. I am Dr. Cosmo. Let's continue the lecture. From his quest to study history, MJ realized that space and consciousness function together and that time is not necessarily flowing in a single direction from past to future. Also, from his studies of psychology, he realized that the world he sees around him is nothing but a projection of his dreams that all materialized. Therefore, the people that surround him are nothing but shadows of his subconscious mind. The reason why interpersonal relationships are so rocky is because there is a part of us in our subconscious mind that makes up conflicting goals. A part of our mind wants to escape and another part wants to advance. Those are two opposing entities, yet one doesn't realize it. In this way, in the subconscious mind, because the parts of a person, the part who wants to play and the part who wants to work, are constantly in battle, it is projected outward like shadows and there appears to be antagonism. As long as this internal battle is left unresolved, there is no point in trying to persuade those around us to change. Upon this realization, MJ began to resolve the inconsistencies of his subconscious mind and began to unite his thoughts. As a result, his interpersonal relationship problems drastically improved. However, no matter how much he put this into practice and gained tremendous results, he didn't feel as if it was real. This is because even though you repeatedly say, those people who surround you are your own projections, you are still compelled to believe that those people and I are different. How is it that this latter idea becomes ingrained deeply into the mind? Ever since we were born, we grew up thinking for decades, I am unique, in a different entity from those around me. So, it is only natural that it's not easy to say, well, no, actually we are one of the same. MJ continued to ponder this. Then, an unforgettable incident occurred to MJ. It was December, 2004. One day, MJ became extremely angry towards a particular person. Let's call the person Mr. E. He lived about 100 miles to the east of MJ. Whether he liked it or not, MJ knew that even though he came across the person whom he strongly disliked, this person is only a fraction of his subconscious. Therefore, without having to confront the person, he simply said out loud in his own room the following statement. How dare you drag me into your dream? It probably has been 10 years since he last remembered being this upset, but MJ was very mad. It was at this moment when MJ was releasing some steam that the doorbell rang. It was a courier service with a package for him. When he opened the small box, there were a few papers, but astonishingly in big letters he found the following written on one of them. How dare you drag me into your dream? MJ felt shivers go down his spine. Such a phrase you don't see very often. Of course the sender of the package was not MJ. It was Mr. W who lived 200 miles west of him. It had been more than a year since the two last met, yet Mr. W went through the trouble of sending a package full of complaints. MJ had no recollection of upsetting Mr. W. And yet, why this phrase? This incident hit MJ hard, as if he was struck by lightning and had an awakening. MJ realized with full conviction that no matter how he looked at this world, it's only a shadow of himself. Alone in his house, MJ was simply imagining being in conflict with Mr. E. If you use a volume of water as an analogy of his thoughts, it was like light rainfall. Then, suddenly, a bucket full of water from the west was unloaded on him. This couldn't have been more clear and easy to understand. Although at first glance, the two seemed to be different and independent occurrences, they were just the front and back of the fractals, or similar figures of one another. In that moment, MJ recalled what he discovered when reading a book on the theory of relativity, about the spherical surface of the photon radius. This is the space in which light cannot escape the gravity of a black hole and just goes round and round. The world that we live in is actually, the spherical surface of the photon radius. The light that is emitted by us just goes in circles. No matter where we look, we see ourselves from behind. The people that surround us are merely a reflection of ourselves as emitted by oneself. It was in this moment that MJ clearly saw in his mind the composition of space-time. Space-time is a ring that rotates. 
While studying psychology, he witnessed over and over again how one's thoughts towards others as well as actual actions done to the others in childhood, come back to haunt us when we are an adult. Because the world is shaped as a ring, the things that were emitted to someone else in the past simply come back to him or her in the future. MJ realized that it was this enclosed space-time continuum that is the world in which we live. Space-time is actually circular. What was thrown in the past is just returning in the future. Likewise, the wife who is subjected to domestic violence from her husband, is experiencing her own violent emotions that she felt towards her younger sister during her childhood. And it's now coming back to attack her. Then, who is her husband? Who is her sister? In fact, they are her potential self. At times she is the violent husband, and at times she is the victimized younger sister. She is both. The reason why we didn't notice this so far is because anyone can clearly see the faults of others in a big way, but he or she sees one's faults in a small way. Yes, the world is a projection. With you in the epicenter, the world that is enlarged like a shadow is what makes up our surroundings. Now, let's solve the puzzle of energy. Imagine in MJ's mind, there are 500 blue-colored grains of sugar and 500 red-colored grains of sugar. In total there are 1,000 grains of sugar. Internally, the two colors merge and create a purple color. MJ thinks that he is now purple. However, in the outside world, it is possible to only project the red color, or likewise, project only the blue color. One cannot project outwards what is not within. However, so long as one considers the purple and the blue and the red to be different, then one cannot understand that what is projected outwards is the same as what is within. One would not be able to understand that one's surroundings are shadows of oneself. Next, let's think about volume. In the east there are 500 grains of blue, in the west there are 500 grains of red projected, as a total there are 1000 grains. However, this is the same energy volume that is within oneself. Yet, we cannot come to think so. Since we believe that others are the same exact existence as ourselves, if we are made up of 1000 grains of sugar, then we believe that others are also made up of 1000 grains of sugar. Just imagine that our fantasy or imagination fills the empty space around the 500 grains. Then, we feel that there are 1000 grains, but this is an illusion. We look to the east and say, that person has up to 1,000 grains of blue. I'm not as bad as he, and we look to the west and say, that person has 1,000 grains of red, how could he be so rude? Since we don't notice this illusion, we count that the amount of energy is 3,000 because there exist three persons. However, in fact, two persons outward are illusions, and the energy amount maintains a constant amount, 1,000 in this case. In reality, there are many colors within you besides red and blue. Then what happens? You can probably imagine. The energy becomes limitless. Needless for me to say, the spherical surface of the photon radius is referring to the area around a black hole. You probably thought, where exactly is the black hole? As a matter of fact, you are the black hole of immense thoughts. Originally, your thoughts had a time difference, but this time difference has now been completely ignored and the thoughts become stacked on top of each other. When thoughts accumulate, they begin to crystallize and that materializes around you. In this way, your existence created the world around you as the real world. Now, MJ's quest has been completed in 2004. Let us finally return to 1997 and solve the mysteries of history. Time is circular. This is the answer to the mystery of history's fractals, or similar forms. The key to solve the puzzle of why the past looks like it is copying the future, 